All right, folks, back on the Boston Man Show, front of the show, Josh Pasner, Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets. Josh, what's up, buddy? How you doing, man? I am doing great. How are you doing? What's going on with you? How's life? What's I know you've been busy. You've been doing a lot of great things, so um, uh, good to be on with you. I always enjoy being able to get on with you. Life has been good, man. Just enjoying the family. Today's my little bud's birthday today. He's 32, so... Uh, a lot of fun for him today. We're going to go out, out and have some fun today. That's why I can talk to you guys, man. Ha- happy birthday to him. And you, Josh. You know, you have a late birthday as well, man. Uh, I am not going to tell everybody your age, but how does it feel, man, having your birthday has passed? What did you do, man? You know what? Um, my birthday was last Monday. And by the way, for everyone here uh, watching, I just got done for a run. You know, being, being a coach, you got to try to stay in shape with the guys in case they ever need me to get on the floor and have to – show them up a little bit on one-on-one, you know what I mean? And oh, yeah. and be able to play against them. So I got to keep in good shape against them. But, uh, you know, on my birthday, not too much. Um, just was, you know, around and about, obviously. Um, you know, a lot going on last week with Georgia Tech. Um, uh, and it was actually on my birthday. But, uh, um, but, uh, but, you know, so the way I look at it, every day is a gift. Every heartbeat's a gift. Every breath is a gift. Man, life is precious. I turned 45. Good Lord willingly, I hope to live to 130. I used to say 100 to 100, 110, 120. I want to stretch it to 130 somehow. I mean, life is like a big party, man. It's just, it's beautiful. And so um, you just, you don't take one day for granted. I hear that, man. I'll tell you what, I told you before, my father's 82 years old, man. And seeing my father do what he does 82 years old, Still coaching up kids, giving kids advice, coaching me up, and I'm almost 40 myself. It's, it's watching my father, 82 years old, gives me hope that I would like him at his age and have his energy and burst still. You know, life's life like basketball or like sports is all about energy. And um, you know, you're an either energy giver or an energy taker, and and um and uh, to try to, you know, kind of the, the the mentality like your dad, you know, instead of I have to do something, I get to do something, you know, and and all matter of how you look at things and the, the, the perspective and the attitude. So God bless your father on that. Obviously, he's, he's continues to make a, just such a strong impact and a positive difference in, in so many. And he should be so proud of, of you. And so, uh, uh, again, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, life. And, um, um, and it's just like sports. I mean, is there any better reality TV show than sports? You I got mean, it there, is, right? It's incredible sports. You just never know in sports. And, uh, Man, it's just a real blessing to be part of uh, to be part of sports. I think mean, Joshua, I mean, you get along so well because you and I, mean, I are both are kids of coaches. We're coaches' kids, so it's like we get it. We get, we get that sense of body relationship, but we were both came from coaches, so we get it. What this thing is, and we're not trying. We know what it is and what it isn't. As you always say on the show, being times you might the players help make you who you are, and we give pour into those players, and they'll pour back into you as well by playing well for you. Yeah, you know, look, I mean. I always like to say coaches are probably not as good as they say they are, not as bad as they say they are, you know, somewhere in the middle. I mean, obviously it's a player's game. Uh, the players got to get on the field or the court or, you know, wherever it may be and, and, and produce and, and get the job done. And um, yes, you've got to have great talent. There's no question about that. Talent matters. I mean, you know, you got to have the ability and to do it and the skill set and the athleticism, but also, more than that, you can have some really good players, but if you don't have a good team and good chemistry and cohesiveness and, and um, um, you know, just the ability to, to um, uh, you know, to, as you mentioned, play for, for the coach, but also play for each other. You know, the trust between the teammates is so important. You know this, your dad knows this, coaches know this. You know, the best way to kind of police your team in a sense, you know, to hold people accountable is not the head coach or the coaches is actually the teammates. That's when you have a really good team. I've always said when the coach has to always be the, you know, the, the, the person to hold everyone accountable all the time, there's probably a limit on and a ceiling on how high the team can go. And yes, the coach has to set the standards, the accountability and all those good things. But when you're a really, really good team, it's the, it's the teammates hold each other accountable and, and they tell each other the truth. And as I like to tell you, as I like to say, you're not there to be their buddy. Their buddy just kind of, the friends, everyone here needs to be friends. You don't have to like each other every second, 
but friends tell each other the truth and are yes. honest with each other. And even when you miss a line, so if we're running line drills and you miss the line, your, your friend needs to call you out, hold you accountable, and we got to do it again. That's when you have a really good team. No doubt. And Josh, can you believe this, man? I know I can't believe it. You've been here seven years, man. Heads your seven seasons, man, here at Georgia Tech, man. And you've been doing great things there. A lot of young men come to your program, a lot of great moments, man. But can you believe it's been seven years already for you heading this, this year? You know, I'm going to my 14th year as a head coach, which is incredible. 14th year as a head coach at a very high level. Uh, this I'm in my 14th year, and this is my seventh going in at Georgia Tech. And, and just so many great things, you know, being part of the Georgia Tech, um, you know, in, the Institute and, and the Athletic Association and, and all the great players that I was able to coach and, and all those good, great things that go with that. Um, however, my first 13 years as a head coach, I was the youngest coach every single year in the league. Every league that I was in, I was always the youngest coach, always. 13 straight years. This year will be my first year I'm not the youngest. John Shire, the new coach at Duke, uh, will take that mantle, and I'll be the second youngest in the league. And this is my first year going into 14 years that I won't be the youngest guy in the league, so youngest head coach. So, uh, um, yeah, no, even though I've been a head coach for a long time, I'm still young. I, I feel energized. I feel great. And I'm really looking forward to this team this season. We've had some great teams in the past. You know, last year we were really young. And, and um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we lost two pros in Alvarado and Moses right to the NBA. Um, and so we had a lot of young guys. But what really hurt us last year, and, and, and because of the young guys, we lost a lot of close games. And, and I've always said, you know, we, we were in so many games, we just weren't able to get over the hump. Part of that is because of our youth. You know, I've said it many times, being young in the ACC, I, I believe the best way to be successful is to get old and stay old. But last year, what really hurt us was not having Bubba Parham. Bubba Parham was out the entire year due to a knee injury. I felt if we had had him, we would have won four or five, six more games and have been a totally different year, especially in those close games. And um, um, so that being said, even though we had a lot of youth last year, a lot of those young guys got a lot of great time in last season. And it will allow them to be really much more ready and mature and seasoned going into this season, this, this upcoming year. And then the second thing, we are spending a lot of time every day in practice, every single day, multiple times. We are doing a lot of time and score situations so when we are in those close games, it will bounce, the ball will bounce our way, and hopefully we can finish out the game the right way. I know, Josh, this year you have eight upperclassmen this year on your roster, which I know is about being staying, getting old, staying old, like five seniors, three juniors, and the young guys, as you say. So I feel like, like you said, there's hope this year, optimism, because, hey, last year they went to those fires, and they, this year they can execute in those tight situations, keep their assignments, and not get tight when it's tight. Yeah, you know, look, I mean, um, you know, basketball is such a rhythm and flow and energy game, and so many games are decided by six points, four points or less. And, um, and so when you do play younger guys, and that happened to my second year, you know, my first year when I got here, we were really old, and we had a great year, and we overachieved, made it the championship of the NIT. My second year, we were really, really young, and we struggled. We struggled. And then the third year, we were a little bit older and we, we, were, we got really good towards the end of the season. My fourth year, we were really, really good. My fifth year, we won the ACC championship. And, then, and that's just part of the cycle. Last year, we, got, we became young again. I, I, again, if we had Bubba Parham, we would have won five or six more games because he would have been a fifth year senior for us. But, you know, we, we threw that, that cycle. So we were young last year. And then next year, this, this season will be older. And the good news is next year, we got our whole team back. Um, now, look, in the ACC, things have changed, too. Because of the college landscape, because of the additional year of co the COVID year and the NIL, there's a lot of teams in this league that have guys who probably shouldn't be playing in college anymore, if that makes sense. Oh, yes. Uh, because of the additional year of COVID, and, they, and, and in most years, they would not have come back because they would have tried to pursue their professional career. But a lot of guys who are not going to be able to play in the NBA, but are really good college players knows that the most money they'll make 
as a basketball player might be in college through the NIL. So a lot of guys throughout the league came back because of the NIL. So that ends up, you know, for a program like us, where we want the maturation because it helps a program like ours where when other teams lose guys, that's the difference where some of the NIL where most, most years guys are left, but because of the NIL, some of those guys who usually would have been gone have come back. So I think the league's going to be really great. And, um, you know, we're going to have to be really good at that, what we can control. And three areas that I think we've got to be um, really good at is um, <clears throat> we got to be really good at defensive rebounding. Because we, we've always been a very good defensive team. So we've got to limit teams to one shot. Secondly, we've got to take care of the basketball. We can't be having any terrible turnovers. We've got to be great at taking care of the basketball. And third, you know, we just got to make free throws. And those are things that are all within our control. And we do that. we got a good chance of winning games. And, Josh, I like how you're playing uh, Clayton State. Vince Alexander down there in Morrow, uh, the first game of the year. You open up Johns Hayes in the arena at Georgia, Georgia State as well, which you deal with yeah, Coach Lanier. And, you know, so North Alabama, Tony, Tony Pohl's a great guy. North Alabama, another great guy who I know very well. And Tony Mel, I got from Memphis, who, who had some ties back there from you was down there at Memphis. Talk about playing those four teams, what they mean to you, those guys as coaches as well, and playing their teams as well, Josh. Yeah, so a couple things on our schedule. You know, usually what I would do is play one private scrimmage and then one exhibition game in a live exhibition game against a Division II team. That's what we would do. Well, this year I decided what was best to play two private scrimmages. And then, and, and then instead of playing the exhibition game, I moved that to the first game of the season, which was Clayton State, which is, you know, it's great for, it's great for both teams. Uh, Vince Alexander is the head coach who, who's a good friend and he does a great job. Um, Clayton State's in the USG system, you know, so they're part of the University of System of Georgia. And so, you're helping them. And so, um, you know, that will be, a, that will be uh, instead of, again, ha playing them in an exhibition, we just moved that to the first game. And then the second game, we're at Georgia State, which, you know, it's a very hard game, obviously. You're playing at Georgia State to open their new arena, new basketball coach in, jo in, in Coach Hayes. And, and he did such a good job last season at Xavier, um, you know, lead him to the NIT championship. And, 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 and um, obviously, he's going to be really good. Georgia State's always had a great program. Part of this game, people ask, why are you playing at Georgia State? Part of this game is the two for one that we decided to do during the COVID year because for budget, Georgia State would come to us twice, two home games, no money exchange. And then in return, we would open their, their, their arena. Um, and again, so no money exchange. So for budget purposes, it was good for Georgia Tech. Um, it's a hard game for Georgia Tech. Um, you know, going into a hostile environment in a sense, because it's going to be packed opening their new arena. And, uh, but again, another great thing for the USG system, because the, you know, Georgia state's part of the USG system. And, um, um, you know, and then from there, the following Thursday, we play Northern Illinois, uh, and then we're down in Fort Myers. Now, I don't know what's going to happen at Fort Myers. If we're still going to hold that tournament there, that's to be determined. We were scheduled to play. Utah and then either Mississippi State or Marquette but obviously Fort Myers you know got beat up pretty bad with Hurricane mm -hmm. with, with Ian and so I don't know what's going to happen on that we do come back after that and play North Alabama at home um, and then we continue on from there so we got a really good schedule and uh, really you know good teams good coaches we're playing against good players and then obviously the ACC which is the best league in all of college basketball so the schedule will get us ready for that. No doubt, man. I'm looking at my schedule trying to find out they just got to come out there and see you guys play because I see my games is a new court, Josh. I, I, it's real nice. I like that court, man. Did you help design that court or was that above your head, man? <laughs> yeah, no, that was a little bit above my pay grade and that was above my head there. And But it's a beautiful court. What happened was there was a big flood leak that ruined the floor from last season. And so we haven't been able to be on, a, on the new floor literally um, since our last home game, believe it or not. And um, so we've been out for a, for a while. So looking forward to get back on the floor to practice, you know, and get back after it. And they did a great job with the, with the floor. I'll tell you what, the first time the floor will be used will be October 7th for the volleyball team. The volleyball team um, with Coach Collier uh, and her volleyball team at Georgia Tech is unbelievable. 
they're outstanding. They're one of the best in the country, top 10 in the country. And that first time that Camish will be used with the new court will be for the volleyball team on October the 7th. So any listeners out there, people watching this, uh, go support the Georgia Tech volleyball team. Top 10 in the country. It's an, they're, they're outstanding. No doubt, man. I got one more for you, Josh. Man, it's gets mad. How is the game in your mind changed from when you play at, at Arizona? So how's it changed for you in your mind since you was a player, man? Now that you're coaching it, how's it changed over the years for you? You know, interesting. You asked that. A couple of things. Um, um, let, the, last Friday, they did a movie. Uh, it, was a, it was a documentary. It's going to be on uh, CBS Sports called Loot, L-U-T-E. And it's about Lute Olson and a lot about the 97 championship team, which I was part of the only team in the history of the NCAA tournament to win the national championship and beat three number one seeds. The only team to ever do that. I still say it's the greatest NCAA tournament run in the history. And you've got, uh, we beat Kansas, Kentucky and North Kansas, North Carolina, Kentucky, the three winningest programs at the time in college basketball, the only team to ever do that. But that was in 1997. That was 25, 26 years ago. The game has changed in a lot of ways. A couple things. Number one, that back then you would play three out, two in, meaning that there would be two traditional post guys a lot of times playing and three perimeter players. Now, most of the game is played either four perimeter players and one inside person or five perimeter players on the floor. And the game has changed where there's really not that true defined center anymore that's been one of the big parts of the game that has changed Two, analytics back then there was not analytics was not involved in the game like it is today I mean you look you got the Atlanta hat the Atlanta Hawks hat on I mean in the NBA man they look at everything in analytics and analytical in fact they have people making decisions and they hire just on analytics in the NBA And, and I'm sure the Hawks do that as well too so that has changed And then you look at the college landscape and you look at, obviously, the NIL, the transfer portal, the, you know, the, 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 the changing of the conferences has totally changed. And so things are constantly evolving and um, you've got to stay flexible, got to be willing to change. And, um, you know, but in the end, as long as they don't change the rule and you can only play five players at one time and, and you still got to put the ball in the basket, that still makes it, you know, there's a lot of similarities to now and, and back then as well. No doubt. Well, Josh, looking forward to seeing you as always, my friend. I'll be out there to support you as always. And best luck to you. All positive vibes your way, man. Uh, always enjoy ch- chatting with you, my brother. You, you too, my friend. Stay in touch and looking forward to it. And uh, some great uh, sports coming up for, for everybody in the city of Atlanta. All right, buddy. See you soon, man. Okay, thank you. Anytime, buddy. Bye-bye.